Today, let's talk about applying rational functions. Okay, so several of you, several of you last week asked me, like, when are we ever going to use this? Okay, very, very few people actually care when they're, when they're going to have to use this when they ask me that. They usually ask me that when we're working on something hard. Nobody ever asks me when are we going to have to use this when we're doing something easy. Okay? So that's one way that I can tell that you're frustrated is when you say, when are we going to ever have to use this? I can also tell if you're frustrated by your tears or screaming, but this is a little calmer, right? Okay? Um, but I have some examples here. I'm going, to sh I'm going to show you the first four, the ones on the front, and then you're going to do the last four, the ones on the back. Okay? Does that make sense? All right, so let's talk about applying rational functions. In order to create tunnels, civil engineers devise plans where tunnel boring machines begin drilling at both ends of the tunnels and meet somewhere in the middle. A tunnel is being built through a section of mountain. One tunnel boring machine alone can finish the tunnel in four years. Another machine can finish the job in three years. If both machines start at opposite ends and work at the same time, when will the tunnel be finished? Now, some people look at this problem and say, oh, three and a half, because they average the two, right? Well, it shouldn't take both of them longer than it takes one of them, right? So it's going to be less than both of the times together. We can't just average them. We've got to use rational functions, OK? So the first machine, we'll just call it the first machine, OK? It's doing one job in how long? Four years. What about the second machine? It's still doing one job in three years, right? How are we going to figure out how long it takes them to, together? Well, there's no sign there yet. What's the sign that usually belongs with together? Add, right? If they're doing it together, it's one-fourth plus one-third, right? What's it going to equal? How many jobs are they doing? One job. How long does it take them together? Well, that's what we're trying to figure out, right? Can I cross-multiply this problem? Not anymore, not since we added that last fraction, right? And plus the equal sign would have to be there. Yeah? So this is what we have to, this is, um, we talked about this on Friday, how to solve an equation like this. If you remember, you have to be denominator assassins, right? We find a denominator, then we use that denominator to get rid of the denominators, okay? So what would be the least common denominator for this problem? Yes? Okay. Remember, we like to let everybody think about the question first before we shout out the answer, okay? If I multiply every fraction by 12x, what happens in the first fraction? The 4 and the 12 simplify to 3. So what's left from the first fraction? 3x, right? What happens with the second fraction? The 3 and the 12 simplify to 4. What's left in the second fraction? 4x. And what happens in the last fraction? Well, the x is simplified to 1 this time, right? And I just get 12. Well, does anybody know what 3x plus 4x is? 7x. 7x equals 12. If I divide both sides by 7, what do I get? So I'm, so 12 sevenths is a perfectly acceptable answer when we're dealing with a problem that just looks like this, right? But when we add words to it, we have to make sure it's an answer that makes sense. If I ask you how long it's going to take for us to do something, and you say 12 sevenths years, Mm, that doesn't make any sense, does it? So what do we need to do this time? Yeah, we need to actually figure out what the decimal is for this so it makes sense. OK? 
okay? So you all have your calculators out on your desk. So you could all turn your calculators on. That's an important step to do first. Turn it on, okay? And then 12 divided by 7. Now, remember the calculators are smart, Alex. And if you press 12 divided by 7, enter, all it's going to tell you is 12 sevenths. So you either have to press 12 divided by 7, control, enter, or 12 divided by 7, decimal, enter, right? And what do you get? So that brings us to another conversation, okay? What's it always, almost always safe to round to? Three, right? It's almost always safe to round to three decimal places. When will we always round to two decimal places? When we're dealing with money, right? Always two when we're dealing with money because it's cents, right? I need us to decide as a group what makes sense for this exact problem. Does it make sense for us to say 1.74, wait, 1.714? Is that right? 1.714 years? Not really. That's what? That's like too much, right? Does, does 1.71 years make sense for this problem? Maybe. Would 1.7 be fine for this problem? Yeah, it would, right? So I'm not going to tell you on the homework what to round to. I want you to think about it and think about what makes sense in this particular problem. So if we decide to say 1.7 years for this problem, does that mean on every single problem on this worksheet we should round to one decimal place? No. No, it does not. Okay? It means for this problem, 1.7 years makes the most sense for me. What if I decided 1.71 years made the most sense for me? Is that okay? Yes. Okay, when's the only time I'm going to count it wrong how you round? Money or if I tell you round to the thousandth and you round to two. Or round to the hundredth and you round to one. You see what I'm saying? That's when, it's, that's when you're going to get points taken off. For today, I want you to think about the problem and think about what makes sense for that particular problem. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm giving you a little freedom, which, to be fair, I tried to do anyways. Is that fair? Okay. Now, this answers the question, right? Excuse me. This answers the equation. What answers the question? What about it, though? What does the question ask? When will the tunnel be finished? How do I answer that question? The tunnel will be finished. What'd you say? 1.7 years. Now, please don't be that person. You know who I'm talking about? I'm talking about that person who says one year and seven months. Please don't be that person. No. What if this was 1.5? Could I put... One year, six months? Yeah, because half of a year is six months, right? If it says 1.7, please remember that doesn't mean one, one year and seven months. Please, please. Okay. If it was 0.75, which it's pretty close to, that would be eight months, nine months, nine months, right? Because it's three-fourths of a year, okay? 1.75 years is a perfectly acceptable answer for us in this situation. But please don't be that person. Okay? This is the answer to the equation. This is the answer to the question. Make sure you have both answers. Got it? Let's talk about Tobias. Tobias drives 300 kilometers in the same time that Alicia drives 200 kilometers. So what do you already know? Tobias is driving faster, right? Maybe not too fast. We don't know anything about the speed limit or anything like that. We just know he drives faster. Is that fair? 
The speed at which Tobias is driving is 20 kilometers per hour more than the speed at which Alicia is driving. We already knew that. Maybe not exactly. We, we knew he was driving faster, right? Find the speed at which Tobias is driving and the speed at which Alicia is driving. Now, before we can do any of that, I need to make sure you know this formula. You know, there's some formulas that you should just know, like area of a rectangle. What's that? Length times width, right? Length times height, whatever, base times height, whatever, whatever words you decide to use. But you got to know, you got to multiply the dimensions to find the area, correct? This is another one of the equations that you should know. If you don't, know it now, okay? What does this mean? Distance, rate times time. Distance, how far you're going to travel, equals the rate that you're traveling times the time that you're traveling. Okay? Do we know Tobias's distance? Do we know Tobias's rate? Do we know Tobias's time? Kind of. I know that it's the same time as Alicia. Well, if I know it's the same time as Alicia, what if I divided both of these by R? Wouldn't that give me the same equation but equal to time? And if we know the equation equal to time, and we know that Tobias and Alicia's time are equal, couldn't I sit there, set their distance and rates equal to solve? So what do I know about Tobias? What is his distance? 300. And what's his rate? Well, I don't know his rate, but I do know that his rate is 20 more than Alicia. Well, if I, if I know his rate is 20 more than Alicia, how fast is Alicia going? Well, her, her distance is 200, right? If I know his distance is based on, excuse me, if I know his rate is based on her rate, what do I have to call her rate? X. If his rate is based on her rate, her rate has to be X. So now what's his rate? X plus 20. It's 20 kilometers faster. Yes? Now, what did I say I could do with these two fractions? And why can I do that? Because it's the same time, right? If I have two fractions set equal to each other, how can I solve them? Cross multiply. 300x equals 200 times x plus 20. Now, just like last week when we talked about this, I know that that's a, this right here is a step that some of you can skip. Some of you can go straight to 300x equals 200x plus 4,000. I know that. I'm not going to skip it when I'm giving you notes right now because I don't want to lose anybody. Is that fair? So how do I go about solving this problem? So you want me to subtract 200 from both sides, 200x? So I get 100 x equals 4,000. So to solve for x, I by 100, right? What does x equal? 40. This answers the equation. What answers the question? Tobias drives, Tobias drives what? He is, right? He drives 60 kilometers per hour. And Alicia drives 40. Whoops, KPH, kilometers per hour.
So this answered the question, excuse me, this answered the equation. We have to make sure we're answering the question, right? We have, do, do you see that I labeled these? Every time I drew, I wrote something, I labeled it. That's to help my brain keep track of what everything stands for, okay? This was the first machine, this was the second machine, and this was together. This is Tobias's information, this is Alicia's information. So when I solve for x, I can look back to the equation. x, okay, x was Alicia's rate. So if I go to look for Tobias's, his rate is x plus 20. Does that make sense? Okay, so labeling, I'm not going to make you do it, but hopefully you see how helpful it is. And you'll just do it on your own. Okay, any questions about problem number two? All right, let's look at problem number three. Chef Craig can decorate a dozen cupcakes in half the time as Chef Charlotte. Together they can decorate the dozen cupcakes in eight minutes. How long would it take each chef to decorate a dozen cupcakes alone? So do you think this is more like problem two or problem one? Do you see the difference in, in problem one and problem two? Problem one, we had a fraction, a fraction, equaling another fraction, right? Adding them together. In problem two, we had one fraction set equal to another fraction. So it's going to be more like problem number one because we have Chef Charlotte and Chef Craig, and now they're going to work together, so I have to add their stuff together to get a total. Does that make sense? Okay. So what do I know about Craig? Okay, so he can do the, the one job. In half the time as it takes Charlotte, right? Now, how do you want to deal with this? If his time is based on her time, what does her time have to be called? X. So what's his time going to be called? Yeah, half X. I hate that. Just for the record, I hate that because we already don't like dealing with fractions and we just put a fraction inside a fraction. Ugh. We're going to be fine, okay? There's actually another way to do this problem and if you really care, I will show you later, okay? What is that? They're working together, right? What, what's it going to equal? Them together. So they're doing the one job and how long? Eight, right? So it's similar to problem one, but not the same. Because in problem one, we knew how fast it took this first machine, and we knew how fast it took the second machine, and we were trying to figure out how long it took together. What we know about Chef um, Craig and Chef Charlotte is we know how long it takes together. We don't know individually. Okay? So what do we need to do? Denominator assassins. Oh, you want to find a common denominator? What do you think your common denominator for this problem should be? Just as a reminder, it's got to be at least as big as the biggest one, if not bigger, right? So what do you think it ought to be? I agree that with you that it has to have an X in it, right? Because these both have an x in it, so we know it has to have an x in it. So what should the coefficient be? 8. Okay? 8x, 8x, and 8x. Okay? We can see pretty clearly that the x is simplified to 1, right? What is 8 divided by a half? I'll tell you right now, it's not 4. 8 times a half is 4. What's 8 divided by a half? 16. Mm -hmm. 16. If you don't believe me, you can put it in your calculator. But that's really what it is. Okay. What happens in the second fraction? X is simplified to 1, and so what's left? 8. And then what happens in the last fraction? 8 simplified to 1, and what are you left with? Okay. If you can't solve an equation like this, we should talk. Yes? Okay. What is 16 plus 8? 24 equals x. 
This answers the equation. Now answer the question. It takes what? It takes Craig. You want to start with Craig? Okay, I'm okay with that. It takes Craig what? 12 minutes? That's not what we got for X. Oh, but we labeled so we can look back and see it's half X for Craig, yes? So 12 minutes and Charlotte? What? 24 minutes. Now, <clears throat> I have to be a little technical here because you know me by now, yes? This is the sentence I wrote because that's the sentence you said. You think that's the best sentence we could write? No, it's kind of messy, right? It takes Craig 12 minutes and Charlotte 24 minutes. It's not a terrible sentence. We could do better, right? How could we make that sentence better? We could put that, right? There's The subject is way up here, and it doesn't really go down here easily, right? It takes Craig 12 minutes, and it takes Charlotte 24 minutes would be a little better, right? Just, just so we're clear, I'm not saying this sentence is wrong. I'm not. I'm saying we could do a better job writing a sentence. Is that fair? I will tell you that it's not the sentence I wrote last period. The sentence I wrote last period said, it would take Craig 12 minutes and it would take Charlotte 24 minutes to make a dozen cupcakes. So, which, which one's right? Oh, wait. So, like, I could write one sentence up here and you could write a different sentence on your paper and they could both be right? Wait, so what I write is not exactly the right answer every time? This needs to be exactly the same, doesn't it? Our sentence is up to us. It's based on how we write sentences, right? They need to say the same things, but do they have to have the exact same words? No, absolutely not. We're different people, right? Is that fair? Once again, trying to give you a little bit of freedom, yes? All right. You ready for the last one? One pipe can fill a tank in six hours, while another pipe can empty it in two hours. If both pipes are open at once, how long would it take to empty the full tank? Hmm. Is it more like problem one or problem two? Problem one, two things, doing each a job. We're trying to figure out how long it takes them to do it together. The only difference is, yeah, they're working against each other this time, isn't, aren't they? We're having to subtract. So here's what we have to be careful of, right? Which one's faster? The one that's emptying it or the one that's filling it? The one that's emptying it is faster. So if I say, like what's our first instinct to say? One-sixth minus one-half, right? Guys, if I do one-sixth minus one-half, that's a negative number. I can't have a negative number because it's asking me how long. I can't have negative time in this in this problem, can I? So what do I need to write? One half minus one sixth. I'm not saying the one sixth is the pipe that's emptying. I'm saying these two things are working against each other, and one sixth is the smaller of the two fractions. Does that make sense? Okay. What is this going to equal? over yeah because that's what we don't know right that's what we don't know so in this particular problem what is the common denominator 6x right 6x so being a denominator assassin I'm going to multiply each of the fractions by 6x what happens in the first fraction simplifies to 3 so what I have left is 3x. What happens in the second fraction? 6 simplifies to 1. I get 
x. And in the last fraction, x is simplify. And I just have 6. Does anybody know what 3x minus x is? 2x, right? Okay, first of all, it took entirely too long. You're scaring me a little. Okay, 2x equals 6. So to solve, just divide by 2. x equals 3. That answers the equation. Answer the question. On your own, on your own, write a sentence to answer the question. Is your sentence exactly what mine is? Does your sentence mean the same as mine does? Good. Um, for the record, is that a math skill? No, it's not. That's an English skill, right? We are working cross-curricular today. English and math, like they're friends. Okay? So... I feel like I need to say this just to make sure. Make sure you have a capital letter at the beginning and a punctuation at the end of some sort. I mean, it could say, it could be like this. Oh, my gosh. Right? But we need some sort of punctuation. And it also doesn't need to be a question because we're trying to answer a question. Right? All right? Um, do you have any questions on any of these problems?